friends and students, I am back with another session, vocabulary. This is the second part on vocabulary part. Okay. Before we go ahead with other parts of vocabulary, I want you guys to pay attention to these two parts. Figurative versus literal. What does it mean? Figurative versus literal. Look at these sentences. I'll try and give the difference between these two uh, words meaning because this will help you a lot in improving your vocabulary. Just two sentences here. Her face is as bright as the moon. Her face is beautiful. When I say literal meaning, you will take the face value of the words. When I say figurative, there is undercurrent meaning. I am not talking the rubber stamp meaning of that. So you need to first find out. When I say her face is as br bright as the moon, I am not literally saying or comparing her face with the moon. I am trying to give the intensity of my feeling. So this is a straight, literal, and this is figurative. Look at the next one. It is raining heavily. It was raining heavily. It was raining cats and dogs. Okay, which one is literal meaning? Which one has that figurative meaning? Undercurrent meaning. So obviously guys, this is straight, literal. I can see, I'm straight away giving you, it's, it, it was raining heavily. Whereas here, cats and dogs, I am trying to imply the same meaning, but with this, you know, you can see the picture, you can see some figure, okay? That is what figure it apart. We'll come back. This baby is the apple of her eye. She loves her baby. Obviously here, straight meaning. Here I am trying to give my expression with a figure apple of her eye it's called figurative expression he walks like his father he walks in his father's shoes i'm comparing his walk with his father's walk literal meaning whereas here i am trying to tell you something maybe i am trying to tell you uh, he behaves like father his behavior. So I am trying to show that feeling with the help of this figure, you know. People in this country bet on rat races. Maybe they are literally, you know, making these rats to go for a race. Modern life has become a rat race. I am trying to tell you some other idea with the help of this. It means busy. I was telling you this. Knowing the meaning of these words or these phrases, it's not a big thing. But problem is to retain, you know, link, logic. Go to the next one. Let me start with the phrasal verbs. Guys, phrasal verbs look like this. Verb. Less, we call it as Particle or participle. Particle. Let's call it particle. These verbs are very simple verbs, action verbs like go, take, eat, okay, jump, run, play. Simple verbs. These verbs and particle has undercurrent meaning some kind of you know undercurrent meaning that you need to first identify then i tell you how to retain this now before i go ahead please pay attention to these guys pay attention to these prepositions when i say on that on is touching that surface the book is on my head on the table it means that touching the surface. Why am I talking about this? You'll know. When I say into the movement is like this. Something 
goes into something, maybe in a closed room. He walks into the room. Now when I say this, from outside, going into the interior part and coming from that side, that we frequently, we use this example. The train is passing through the tunnel. I can see through the window. You can see that action, you know, like this. Okay. We are in the room at rest. Fine. <clears throat> Understand this point and pay attention to this. As human experiences, you know, shape the language. Whatever language, you know, we have, it was shaped because of human experiences and with our senses we experience our surroundings. To understand these phrasal verbs, I want you to see one angle guys, another good word in English, perspective. What is perspective? The way I look at something. We have different, different perspectives. Suppose I am standing here for my cameraman, I am standing in front of the camera. Maybe a person who is standing outside the room, maybe I am in the room. My position is not changed, but the way you know, people look at this angle is you know, changing here. Or somebody say that I am in Hyderabad, I am in you know, East Building. Or somebody says I am in India, or so somebody can say that I am on the planet Earth. Perspective changes, but my position doesn't change. So when you want to look at and learn these phrasal verbs, you need to understand his perspective is. Now, once again, humans, they understand this space. They can sense this shape, color, all these things. Now here I want to focus on space. Okay, look at this. Yeah. When I say up, this is the way I uh, present up in a space, down, okay. When I say this word, this phrasal verb, look up, meaning refer, <clears throat> something like this. Please look up this word in the dictionary, okay, but I use it as a refer. Why am I using this? Look up, up, you focus on up. I am taking something up, you know, maybe visual to my eyes or to my idea brain. So up. Now add up. Up has also gives the meaning of, you know, some kind of increasing some uh, ideas or the quantity. Here, add up, maybe increase in amount. I may use it figuratively also. Like, these things add up to your problems. It means increasing your problems. Okay, these expenses add up to already whatever exp uh, expenses you have. In that sense also I can use, but I wanted to focus on up. Up can be used in the sense of, you know, going. Undercurrently that idea is there, up. Go up. Sometimes literal meaning, prices have gone up. Not literal in the sense, but obviously prices means, you know, going up in the figurative sense. You know, little meaning, I picked it up. Look at this direction. And I can also use this, you know, I, I just went uh, to pick up my friend at the station. Okay, lift. Not literally there, figurative. Dress up. Dress up is obviously, I am using the sense of getting ready. So there is some kind of getting ready for something up, right? Set up. Set up, look at this, set up. It means something is ready to do that. So to build, he is setting up uh, a company, not in a literal sense. Okay, he is setting up building, maybe in a literal sense, setting up a company, not in a literal sense, figurative. Bring up, raise someone, children generally, you know, mothers bring up their children. Break up, 
maybe humans might have seen this one. When I want to break something, maybe I'll break like this. Sometimes I'll break like even this way also, but generally I want to break something like this. Break up, to separate. Fill up, to make something completely uh, full. I fill up this post figuratively. Guys, focus on this. Slowly what happens, even if you look at a new phrasal verb also, you maybe go closer because of these angles. Look at this one, down. Obviously, down is the opposite of up, a space. Obviously, it represents like this. Now, put down, maybe stop, put down. Maybe I use this one, put down. Or I sometimes I use in a little sense. This uh, fighter put the opponent down, literally there. Fall down, you know, not good enough. Prices have fallen down. It means opposite of that, up and going down. Down. Cut down. Maybe if I am cutting, something is down, maybe. So, in that sense, these guys have cut down your expenses. Okay, cut down, size, expenses, cut down. Turn down. <coughs> you know, turn up, turn down. Maybe this action. Okay, turn down to reject. Sometimes we, you know, use this sign also. Calm down, pacify, calm down. You know, if you read some furious person, calm down means he is slowly coming to this normal position. So focus on this will help you to understand and retain this one. Okay. Into, as I gave this guys, into gives idea like this. Maybe a close space, some movement. Into. Look into, obviously I'm looking into to search something. So investigate. In that sense, okay. Break into, <coughs> the thieves broke into this uh, house. Enter by force. Try and see the meaning visually there. You know, breaking something and they are entering, okay? Break into, break and moving. Into, guys, yesterday, I ran into one of my old friends to meet someone unexpectedly. Maybe, not literally, run, okay? Suddenly you meet someone unexpectedly. So, in this sense, I use this. Turn into. This turned into a bigger problem, okay? To become something or change, okay? Into moving. Now, this verb, okay? And if I change these particles, meanings also change, okay? That is what you guys have to fo focus. Take a, a simple verb like this and try and put what is the meaning of take out try and see the little meaning then try and see the figurative meaning take out so obviously out is this part is out which is not in a closed space take out take out your uh, money little sense and spend okay Take out, coming out. Take over. <clears throat> take over this position. Sometimes, you know, by force. Take over. Us usurping that position. Up. Take up. Take up. If I put something and put up, obviously that is my priority. I took up the challenge that is here. Take after. After. You know, generally we use it for you know, kids who took after their parents, resemblance, looks wise. Take, take back, the literal sense, something, but in figurative sense, you have to take back your words, not, you can't really, really take them back, but you understand the figurative meaning of that, you have to maybe feel sorry about what you have said. Take off, you know, off guys is, I would say, opposite of on which is 
you know, not uh, the contact of something. Um, for example, aeroplane takes off. It means aeroplane goes and comes back. Whenever I say, okay guys, let me take off. It means I'll go and come back. That's the meaning of that. Take on. You know, take on is used for fight. He took on that opponent. Take <coughs> down. You know, different, different meanings we have. Take down the notes. Somewhere, you know, down. You're putting on paper. So this is the way you guys have to understand. Another thing, I was talking about this, loan words. English, I'm repeating, ruled all over the world. In the process, English has given words to other languages. Can you speak your mother tongue without using a single English word? No, English has gone so deep into our languages, without English words, we can't speak our mother tongue too. You know, same, other way around, same with English. English guys have taken so many words, not consciously, sometimes it happened because of whatever the reasons, historical reasons or whatever the reasons, you know, English is also got words from different, different languages. But funny thing guys, when these guys take words from other languages, obviously they give their flavor. We all have this problem, you know, uh, mother tongue influence. I'm talking about the spoken form, you know, sound system. Interesting, you guys, if you <coughs> break down the sound system in the whole world, whether it is noise or music or a speech, maximum 100 plus sounds if you break into smaller units. English uses 44 sounds. Maybe our languages use more than that or uh, uh, fewer than that. That is a different story. But what happens, guys, if English guys find a 45th sound in any particular word, their, voc their vocal cords don't help. Same with us. There are certain uh, sounds in English we don't have in our languages. That is the reason we have a problem in uh, pr pronouncing or producing that sound. So point I'm trying to say here, some words taken from different, different languages and after coming into English, they have given that English flavor. Anyway, proper nouns, person's names, some words are uh, you know, gone into English from person's name. Look at this. Have you come across this? Why am I giving this one, guys? This is another way of, uh, you know, improving vocabulary. You can have a category like this. Words from proper nouns, words from this language, words from that language, words from this book, words from that book. You can have, or words frequently used by that leader or that news leader. You can have, or words frequently used in this Hindu's editorial. So you can have any category, but point what I'm trying to emphasize is you have your own list of words. Don't rely on somebody else's list of words. Okay, so this is the way you can do it. I'm just giving you some examples which I was doing when I was a student. Maverick. Maverick was a person's name. He was a shepherd. Okay, and king asked all the shepherds to tag their sheep so that it was easy for king to collect taxes. But this person maverick did not do that he was going against to other persons uh, whatever they are going with so maverick in english more than english is used a person who is different from others okay not uh, not um, you know usually opposite but different from others we can use like this maverick director maverick writer it means he is different from other people taken from person's name. Quixotic, all these are SSE words. Quixotic was also guys, actually taken from a literary character. There was a novel in that there was a hero, his name is Quixotic. He was like very impractical. The meaning we use in modern English is quixotic means a person who is impractical, romantically impractical. What does it mean? Suppose somebody says, uh, I'll go and get this moon for you. And uh, the girl says, go and get the moon. So this is like romantically impractical. 
quixotic. Procrustean. Procrustean, you know, is a, again a, a person's name from a mythology. Look at this. If, I, if you uh, uh, ask me to give the meaning, I'll give the meaning. Check it out first, then I'll talk about this. Mm. Editing to get the conformity. Obviously, it doesn't go into your system. But when you look back and find out his origin, okay, maybe you understand. Procrustean was a thief, robber in fact. He used to kidnap people from the street, take them to his cave, tie them to a special cot which he had in his cave. If the person was longer than the cot, chop his limbs. If the person was shorter than the cot, with the help of ropes, two sides, he used to stretch them so that they fit into the cot. Why he was doing that, we don't know. But our English guys, these lexicographers and the people who are interested in the words, they got this concept. They like this concept. And now they are using in the sense, suppose if I say, maybe you understand, this new law needs a procrustean treatment. Maybe this law should be adjusted either this way or this way. That is the meaning of procrustean. You guys see this, but this was also taken from a person's name, right? Sandwich was <clears throat> one earl, when he was a kind of king in England. Those days, kings maximum, you know, they used to have the luxurious lifestyle. They come, go to a gambling uh, part and they play cards or whatever. So their luxurious life. So this fellow was addicted to gambling, maybe cards or whatever. So he didn't want to move from his place and waste a single minute. He always wanted to, you know, get involved with the gambling. So those days, taking lunch was like a ritual for them. Especially English guys, they go, sit, you know, all the items come and one hour program, morning, you know, uh, breakfast and lunch and uh, dinner. So this guy first time came out with this idea. Instead of going to dining hall and have food, he asked his servant to get a meat between two slices of bread and he started eating. And people like this idea, but everything should be named. So immediately they didn't know what to name. So this person's name, sandwich, sandwich, sandwich is given to that kind of recipe. Today also we use sandwich. After that we have so many you know, types of sandwiches. Look at the way words walk into language. Boycott was also a person's name. You know what is boycott, you know, outcast. Probably this was the first person who actually got this punishment. Okay, so boycott means punishment thrown out of the village or country. Guys, there are so many words even our Indian languages contributed to English language. You know this, the movie also with this. Right, when these guys are saying avatar, avatar, they may probably they say avatar, okay, it means descending, you know, avatar or you know, taking a, a form of somebody. You know, this word is taken from Puri Jagannath. I'm not talking about film director, I'm talking about, you know, what is our temple. Okay, Jagannath. Unstoppable force. These guys have taken, you know these guys, every year there is a huge procession at Puri, you know this idol Jagannath is kept on a chariot and thousands of people pull that chariot. And once this uh, chariot starts moving, it cannot be stopped till it reaches its destination. Sometimes you know people are crushed under the wheels of this one, very powerful force. So somebody might have seen this one and asked, hey what is that, what is happening? Maybe the devotee said, Jagannath, Jagannath. Then he said, oh, Jagannath, that fellow has taken that word. And still we use in modern English in this sense. Shampoo. Generally we say shampoo, but it's shampoo, that's the right pronunciation. 
and this is taken from Hindi word champi, right? Champi, malish. Bandicoot. Uh, as far as my knowledge, this is the only word from Telugu into English. Okay, guys. Bandicoot. Some I don't know what, what, what should I say? Rodent. Okay. In Telugu, we say pandikokku. That's the only word. Pandikokku, pandikokku, bandicoot, bandicoot. Pronunciation problem. Pandikokku turned into bandicoot. Pronunciation problem. Veranda. Tamil. You know, taken from Tamil. Bangalow. Like, probably Hindi word. Another Tamil word. Parai. Like that, there are so many words. Because, you know, I, I, I got some <coughs> idea about this language. I have collected words from this. Guys, this is also another way of, you know, uh, collecting words. Your mother tongue, just check it out. Just Google, you'll find so many words. My mother tongue, okay, tell me how many words. Oh, this is a word, fine. Then I'm sure you remember that. But you should also see in what sense this particular word is being used in English. Then another thing, you know, we have this, you know, Hindu mythologies, like, you know, Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita, uh, I mean, uh, Mahabharata, not, not Bhagavad Gita, okay? Mahabharat. And like this, English guys depend on Greek mythology. Right? Look at this, so many characters' names gone into uh, this English language. Adonis, an extremely handsome man is generally referred to Adonis. Adonis is supposed to be very handsome guy, or god rather, Greek god. So, in modern English, we refer Adonis when I want to talk about uh, an extremely handsome man. Cassandra. Cassandra means uh, professing, you know, foretelling a bad thing. Like Cassandra was uh, some Greek god's daughter. She got this boon of, you know, she could see the future. She could predict the future. But something, I don't remember the exact story, uh, another god falls in love with Cassandra and Cassandra rejects uh, God's love and uh, this God got angry and uh, cursed her saying that you know your predictions will be doomed it means opposite whatever you predict that becomes opposite okay so Cassandra in modern English means whoever pulls somebody like like you know negative uh, talkers like they always say okay you're going to write this exam hmm, when should you get through this one so he's a Cassandra he's a negative person he's always trying to uh, throw this negativity Carnicopia. Carnicopia is also referred in Greek mythology, guys. It means wealth. Okay, uh, maybe better if I use this Akshay Patra, right? That is the uh, translation, you know, Indian language translation, Carnicopia. Carnicopia of knowledge. It means full rich ore. Okay, rich or in that way I use it. Herculean task. Hercules was also, you know, character in Greek mythology. He was very strong, so strong that, you know, uh, some story, you know, cousins were, uh, you know, cousins were troubling him and, you know, asked him to perform some seven deadly tasks. One of the tasks was, you know, according to Greek mythology, the whole world is on the shoulders of Atlas, another Greek god. So only this other person who could do that was Herculean. And this Atlas was lifting this world for so many years, he wanted to go for a small break, but nobody was there to lift. So Herculean went and, you know, he gave him a five minutes break and he could uh, hold that on his shoulder. So difficult task in modern English, whenever I want to refer difficult task, I use this word, Herculean task. Don't think learning vocabulary is a Herculean task, okay? You can make it easier if you follow a proper way. Narcissist, a person who loves himself, who loves his looks, is called Narcissist. There's an interesting story behind this. Narcissist was again a Greek god. All Greek gods are supposed to be very handsome. Another handsome uh, Narcissist, Greek god. So handsome, but he didn't know he was so good looking. Angels used to look at him and fall for him on the spot. He was walking on the streets and angels fall like this. Okay, but unaware of his looks. 
One day he was passing through the forest. He was thirsty and he wanted to drink water from a small pond. In the process, he happened to see his own image. First time, maybe those days there were no mirrors. First time he happened to see his own image and fell in love with his own image. He didn't know that it was his image. And he wanted to kiss that image. In the process, he fell in the pond and died. Okay, so that was the story of narcissist. So narcissist, I use uh, in modern English, a person who loves his looks. Mm, like I can use this example, mm, our, our movie stars are narcissists. They are very particular about their looks. They love their looks. There's another word, even this one, guys, narcotic is also a derivation of this. Phoenix. Phoenix is a mythical bird. There is no bird like Phoenix, but poets and writers have created this and put into the history. I mean, uh, mythology. So this Phoenix has a peculiar quality. It jumps in the fire and kills himself and again comes back. So in Phoenix, I can use in two ways. Beauty, you know, very, what do you say, good looking or very beautiful things I compare with the Phoenix. Another one is never say die. He's got Phoenix-like attitude. Though he got down, he knows how to come back. It means Phoenix-like attitude. taken some languages because all these words are given uh, SSC that's what I have categorized them aficionado aficionado is actually yes, a, a person who loves sports from Spanish okay now I can actually it was started with the football a person uh, who loves this football uh, sport but now I can use it for any other sport a person who loves any sport is called aficionado aficionado of cricket aficionado of uh, this sport Bonanza. Bonanza. You might have heard this word frequently, you know, festival, bonanza, Sankranti, bonanza. Bonanza means where you can reap benefits, you know, or. That's a little meaning of that. Bravado. Bravado is like fake courage. He is not courageous, but he acts as if he, he were courageous. So that person is called, you know, bravado. He has got that bravado look. Desperado, the movie's name. Desperado means a desperate criminal. Siesta, from again Spain. Siesta, generally these guys, in the afternoon, they close their uh, shops and, you know, this kind of things uh, to go for a small nap. This is called siesta and we use it in English. Renegade. Renegade is nothing but a rebel. A person who is involved in a particular group and suddenly he is going against that group is called renegade, something similar to rebel. I told you guys, maximum number of words in English are taken from French. Reason, French ruled England for so many years. Those days, French used to be official language and English used to be like, you know, labors like, like, you know, royals and all, they used to speak French. So later, you know, things turned in the other way around, but French has a lot of influence on English language. And the problem with the French guys is pronunciation. These guys try and uh, retain this pronunciation. You should also pay attention to the pronunciation of these words. This is entrepreneur, a person who is willing to take risk to do a business. Entrepreneur. Impasse. Impasse where I cannot go for, like a block, right? I use this uh, in a chess, impasse, where king cannot move, like check. Tartet. Private talk or private conversation between two persons. Let's have a tete -a tete Nostalgia. I'm sure you might have heard this one. 
Nostalgia means some kind of longing for our past. Okay, nostalgic old man. He thinks about his past, good old days. That mood is called nostalgia. Look at the pronunciation. Fa, pa. Fa, pa. It means some kind of uh, social blunder. Okay, uh, you know, so, social wise, people are expected to behave in a certain way. Okay, so if somebody uh, has this kind of social embarrassment, that's called fa pa. You know, fashion world, very frequently we use this one. Art couture. Art couture. It means very elegant dressing, generally from, uh, you know, designers. So that is that kind of dressing is called art culture. Let's move to idioms and phrases. Guys, you need to understand this one. Again, I, I was talking about this. Language obviously gets influenced with the culture, with the traditions, with some events which are like there forever in history. So these guys carry them to represent some kind of meaning, right? Even proverbs, guys. Proverbs, I would say, is like, you know, capsules of wisdom. Whatever uh, problems these guys have gone through, who I'm, I'm talking about, you know, ancestors, and they are trying to send their knowledge of wisdom to the next generation in the form of this, you know, or proverbs. A stitch in time saves nine. It means act immediately so that you can save that further damage. So in that sense, they have given, you know, Capsule kind of thing. Now, idioms also, something like that. So, idioms also got some birth time. This backseat driver was very new, 20th century uh, idiom. <clears throat> what does it mean? Guys, why am I giving this background? What happens is, literal meaning. You have an implied meaning. To link this literal and implied meaning, you need to have this story. And stories, we all love. And once you know the story behind this, chances are very bright that you retain that meaning. <coughs> Sorry. Backseat driver. Little meaning is a person, you know, who sits in the backseat of the car and he gives the instruction. Drive this, drive that way, drive that. So, but I don't only use in a literal sense, figuratively, a person who gives unwanted advice <coughs> is called backseat driver. To give cold shoulder, <coughs> I think some reference to the, uh, some fables, some stories, some kind of <coughs> stories in the past. If a guest comes, okay, and if you want to welcome this guest, you will give a nice food, hot beverages and, you know, hot food. But if you don't like that, you know, he is given this cold shoulder. Is the shoulder here is referring to the lamb, you know, this mutton. So, to give cold shoulder means not proper treatment, you know, not a warm welcome. That is the meaning of that. <laughs> know your ropes. Know your ropes. Guys, uh, before this invention of this uh, mechanical part, people used to rely on this shipping, I mean, say, voyages, ship voyages. So what happens is that only technical knowledge at that time was the sailors supposed to have the knowledge of not giving these knots ropes. Where to give this knot, where to tie this rope, where to untie this, so all that stuff. Another uh, reference is uh, the dramas. You know, we they used to have a different, different curtains. So when to... Uh, remove this knot and when to raise the curtains. So all that knowledge, you know, refers to the technical knowledge of that particular person. So know your ropes. Suppose if I say this sailor knows his ropes those days, it means he is very good at that sailing. Whereas in modern English, I can use it for any profession. He knows his ropes. This engineer knows his ropes. It means he has got very good knowledge about his uh, field. That is the meaning of that. So you should know your ropes. <coughs> Cat got your tongue. It means 
suppose somebody is not communicating you know i am asking you a question guys please answer me and that fellow just looking at me what happened why are you not answering me has cat got your tongue in that sense i use why am i using cat got your tongue why not horse or why not elephant why am i using this again there is some uh, reference historical reference some time ago all these are from this you know england england and all there was a king he had got a particular you know special what do you call hunter it has a uh, nine whips suppose if the pun- if you uh, know the criminal gets the punishment with this uh, lashes one lash equals to nine lashes okay guys and it was so painful it seems if some offender gets this kind of punishment he used to become dumb temporarily maybe for a week or 10 days painful so he couldn't open his mouth and speak so indirectly it says have you got that kind of punishment that was called cat o 9 something cat o 9 hunter forget about this you only focus on this person who got a punishment that time and he couldn't open his mouth in modern english when i say cat got your tongue means have you why you have you become dumb that's the meaning of that on blind eye <coughs> you might have seen this in bahubali movie yes kings used to stand on the fort and they give instruction to the soldiers go this way go that way come back so those days it used to happen with a kind of signs you know with kind of binoculars one eye binocular you know the people communicate you know people the soldiers are at war and this king is sending message there was one warrior who didn't want to stop the war and come back but king asked him to come back but this particular warrior he was blind in one eye you might have seen that you know most of the english movies you know warriors have one cover like this you know one eye is covered so he purposefully put that binoculars to the eye which is you know blind so that gave this uh, meaning of this particular word turn blind eye means purposefully ignoring some instructions die hard i don't know whether you guys, this generation knows the movie die hard one die hard two die hard three there are so many series die hard don't give up in a little meaning die uh, what is the opposite of this die easily suppose i think this was taken from soldiers soldiers were being attacked you know enemies are coming and uh, commander is giving them instruction die hard don't die easily fight and then uh, die but don't die easily so die hard means don't give up that's the meaning of that <clears throat> bury the hatchet bury the hatchet it means uh, something similar to it was like you know literally those days you know england ireland and other lands were there they were always in you know, a fight <clears throat> whenever there was a peace accord soldiers come to the border they dig a pit and they put all their hatchets and they bury them it is like signaling that they are not going for further war okay so bury the hatchet means going for this peace let us bury the hatchet two persons are saying they maybe they had a fight now they said let us bury the hatchet means now we'll become uh, friends okay guys go for a quick short break come back then we'll talk more about this thank you
Yes, welcome back. The camera can't lie. Even this is comparatively very modern expression when cameras were you know, invented. So there is another joke. I think this, is, this phrase itself is giving you a straight meaning. The camera can't lie. It means whatever it is uh, shot that is visible. You can't say no to that. There is one nice uh, <clears throat> joke about this. Somebody has given this. The cameras can't lie. Maybe this idiom was invented, I mean, uh, coined before this Photoshop was uh, invented. Got it? It means now in whatever the picture we take, with the Photoshop we can change. Fine. Sheep. Black sheep, you say, we who doesn't belong to this particular group. Okay, odd man out kind of thing. It was taken from, again, you know, uh, people in England, you know, even now, you know, we have a lot of demand for this wool. So these guys uh, put this uh, sheep in a pen, a place where sheep are kept. So occasionally these guys have uh, this uh, black sheep. Fine. So these guys take this black sheep and put aside because there is no great demand for this uh, black wool. So they always make sure that white sheep are kept in separate and black sheep are you know, put in a separate world. So that practice gave the uh, word black sheep. Who is the black sheep in this group? It means who doesn't belong to this group. Red-handed. <clears throat> there is some phrases like idioms we have exchanged, translated. We also have, right? In, in Hindi we have range hat pakadna. He was caught red-handed. Now look at the interesting story behind this. Some time ago, English people were given, I mean, got this instruction from the king, no hunting and no animal skin poaching. Right, but whenever there was a law, always there are law breakers, <coughs> soldiers those time, you know, like police kind of. Those guys to have, used to have a constant uh, surveillance and constant monitoring of the forest. But if they find any person, a hunter or a smuggler, like uh, poaching the animal skin, obviously in that process, you know, this poacher hands become red because of the blood. So these guys take him, tie his hands and present in front of the king. This is like a proof. See, he was caught red. Now, caught red-handed. Where, you know, literal blood with his hands, red color. So this expression came into usage. He was caught red-handed means person who was caught while committing the crime. Own of contention. <clears throat> As I told you, whatever we observe in our surroundings, or our, like uh, uh, practices, tradition, culture, all these things sometimes come into language. This is like your two dogs fighting for a bone. Okay, two dogs fighting for a bone. What is that uh, fight for these two dogs? Contention fight, bone. So bone of contention means the issue where two people are fighting for. What is the bone of contention between these two you know, people who are arguing for this? So there may be a piece of land, something like that. Straight from the horse's mouth. First, let me give the meaning. It means, reliable source of information. I got some information from a reliable source. Then I say, uh, these shares are going to uh, like smash or this uh, prices of this particular shares are going up or tomorrow is a holiday, I got a news. Now, uh, now Modi is again going to ban 2000 rupees. I got some information. Then I, you ask me, sir, how do you know that? I got, you know, news straight from the horse's mouth. Okay. Now, why am I using straight from the horse's mouth for this reliable source of information? I don't know how far it's true, guys, but I understand people used to find out horse's age by opening mouth and counting the teeth. Maybe formation of teeth helps them to find out the age of the horse. 
So when good old days, when people wanted to buy these horses, they go to a market, they open the horse's mouth and count the number of teeth and find, okay, this is uh, 12 years to 15 years. That's the way people used to find out. And that practice became one idiom saying that straight from the horse's mouth means information got from a reliable source. Okay. Flogging a dead horse. Flogging. Yeah. Hitting, beating. Flogging a dead horse. Now, what is the use? In that sense, maybe I would say this is a capsule of wisdom. There is no point flogging a dead horse. It means it doesn't work. Now, I am using in the sense some futile efforts. Okay. If you are you're putting some efforts, which anyway, I think they are useless. In that sense, then I say, don't flog a dead horse. There's no point. Bite the bullet. Okay. Let me just take. Bite the bullet. First, understand the meaning, guys. Bear the pain. Okay. Now. Why bite the, bite, uh, bite the bullet is bear the pain? Maybe, you know, wo World War time, I believe. So, you know, people get hurt. See, you know, war means full of, you know, wounded soldiers. Sometimes, you know, uh, limbs cut, hands cut. So they used to have the mobile hospitals. So whenever there was some emergency, immediately the soldiers rushed to that mobile hospitals and all. And guys, sometimes what happens, these mobile hospitals don't have proper equipment or proper medicine. Suppose, most of the times people, you know, soldiers come with this uh, bullet in the hands or limbs somewhere. So these soldiers were operated without giving anesthesia because there was no anesthesia in that mobile, uh, whatever, uh, hospitals. So you, can, you can't imagine the pain, right guys? So these doctors, before performing that operation without anesthesia, uh, they used to give bullet and put between the teeth of the soldier. So he says, there is a pain you have to bear. So this fellow used to like, ah, bear the pain. Okay? By the bullet. Butter up. Butter up. This is, this origin has Indian roots. I think this was taken from, you know, Tamil culture or maybe in other cultures also. We perform puja to Lord Krishna with that butter, right, balls. They make a balls and they throw at the idol and that's a kind of, you know, prayer or a puja. So why do people do that? Obviously to get the favor from the God. So butter up in English means maybe praising somebody to get the favor from this, especially a person who's in a position, this person comes and butter up, he is buttering up, okay? That is the meaning of butter up, taken from Indian culture. White elephant. White elephant is used when I am referring to some property, maybe a bike or a building, which is very difficult in the sense of, you know, very expensive, to maintain that. Then I say, this bike has become a white elephant here. You know, it is consuming a lot of petrol. <clears throat> Why am I using white elephant? Why not black elephant or yellow elephant or red elephant? White elephants used to be very rare, guys. <clears throat> rare breed. Sometimes kings were very happy with the poets and all. And immediately, you know, sometimes what happens? These guys give, okay, take this chain, yours. Or take that... Uh, uh, Shamshabad uh, airport because king can give anything to anyone and sometimes these guys give white elephant as a gift and it's like you know Nobel Prize or you know some kind of possession this poor poet or writer he gets this elephant home and he had to maintain that and you know how much elephants eat this poor fellow sometimes had to sell his property to feed white elephant one of the stories there are so many stories one of the stories of this white elephant is this. So, any possession of yours and it is making you difficult to maintain, that is referred white elephant. <coughs> Wix. 
Guys, I'm, I'm sure you might have seen the pictures, you know, judges and other, you know, poets, writers, they have these kind of white wigs, you know, pictures. Those days, people used to wear wigs, like we are wearing, you know, this uh, blazers and, you know, ties. Do, those days, wigs. The bigger the position, the bigger the wig. So that wigs give the idea that this fellow is famous in a society. That's the reason we say big wigs. Many big wigs are going to add on this meeting, coming to the function. It means famous people, famous in a society. Stick to your guns. <clears throat> this is obviously a reference to the soldiers. Soldiers for fighting, commanders always give instruction, you know, turn left, turn right, straight, shoot, keep shooting, all this. So these guys are given a position and they all have guns and enemy is, you know, uh, coming, enemy group is coming here and commander is giving his, uh, instruction, stick to your guns, means stick to this position and keep firing. So that expression walked into normal language expression like, when I say stick to your guns, okay, what is your opinion about this? You say, this is my opinion, then stick to your guns. It means stick to your opinion, stick to your position. Okay guys, this is what, you know, uh, today's session. Okay, let me summarize, then we take off. Phrasal verbs are tested and you also focus on derivatives, okay? Idiomatic expression, especially these kind of things, you go back. Don't only learn the words meaning, you also learn about the meaning, all right? About the word, where is it taken from? So that helps you a lot. And, and finally, guys, maybe in the next session, I talk about confusing words. Two words closer in meaning, but there is a slight difference in the meaning. So these words are very frequently tested in your uh, competitive exams. That we'll see in the next session. Okay, guys. So thank you very much, guys. See you in the next session.